Hello and welcome to to the final bell, the official Geelong Cats podcast. It is great to have you with us after another Cats win. It got the heart pumping again, just like the week before against the Lions. But the Cats did get the win against the old rivals, the Hawks, on Easter Monday. Just, just. We're going to talk about all of that in just a second. We're going to talk about the upcoming match, Melbourne, on Sunday, back at the MCG. We're also going to have a chat to a man who played 70-odd games for the Cats, 80-odd games for the Demons. Clint Bizzle is going to be our guest on this week's podcast. We'll get to your questions as we always do, but first of all, it is my great pleasure to welcome my co-host on the podcast, Scotty Gallen. Hello, Scotty. Hello, Cameron. So we've got the, the next Gary Ablett on. Yeah, he was, wasn't he? Oh, he was compared. They jumped on Prob. He had the blonde hair taking hangers. Bang. I don't know the real story. I look forward to him explaining it. Yeah, but the kid from Queensland came down and took some big grabs early. And, and he was... quickly became the next Gary Ablett Prob is. And so we had to shuffle him off to Melbourne after that. We were big on comparing oh. players back then. <laughs> oh, we then still as... are. Yeah, true. There's been a lot of Wayne Careys. There's been a lot of. I mean, it's just. It's natural for fans, commentators, all of us to do it. You say he's going to. You think, oh, he reminds me of her, he looks like, but you yeah. can't nah. to say, oh, he'll Beer's be the, got next the whole, Gary it's the next, You know what it's <laughs> like down here, the Geelong Addy and the Faith will go, yes, we've got another one. Oof, Poor big old Beer. Cool. Big call. Be great to chat with him. As I said, he had 80-odd uh, games with the Demons as well, so we'll talk to him about that as well. Let's start, though, Scotty, <sighs> Easter Monday against the Hawks in a game that going in, oh. probably thought the Cats would win. Thought? Reasonably Hawthorne comfortably. are a developing team. They're not... The, I know these matchups. I know there's a theory. They never they, go I to know, script. But let's... The basics, the truisms is Geelong should have won by 10 goals. And they were looking comfortable. When what, they three or four 30, goals up? 30 points, I think, was the furthest they got to. They ended up winning by five points, which Kurtz fans would know. Well, and explain to me what's happening with our team. So, because this has oh, happened to... I only have a theory. Well, th- uh, three weeks. They're not running out games, which is obvious. No, Brisbane they're Lions came hard over the top correct. of them the week before. They're getting canned for slow play, which I don't think they're deliberately doing, but maybe they are. You've got a very good theory, which I like about this. It, it's just a theory. It feels like... So, So first of all, let's paint the picture. Geelong have had a... The whole competition had a much shorter preseason yes. than normal. Geelong and Richmond and those teams that made it deep into finals have had an extremely short preseason. And yes, there would have been some carryover match fitness, but by the time you get to the end of the season, you are match fit, but not you, you're carrying niggles, mm. all that sort of stuff. You're not that um, tra- traditionally aerobically fit and strong. You've lost a bit throughout the course of the season just trying to recover for matches. Pre-season is for getting yourself absolutely cherry ripe to go. Geelong's had a very short window in order to do that. They've also, too, it's just a fact, they've got some older players on the list so there are some soft tissue concerns and unfortunately Sean Higgins was another Mm. one on the weekend. So my theory, Scotty, is that because of missing a couple of key personnel, Dangerfield, Jeremy Cameron, etc., the limited preseason and some concerns around some soft, soft tissue injuries, that it feels like Geelong would prefer to play the fast, high-intensity game of football that naturally occurs for only around about 80 minutes rather than 120 minutes. I'm only plucking a number of 80 mm-hmm. out of them. So therefore, in order to shorten the quick part of the game, they go into a controlled possession mode, the kick mark, everything that we're seeing and some fans are getting frustrated with, in order to limit the amount of up and down the ground, quick flying around running that they have to do and therefore aiming to hold on for that 80-minute period. Whereas a team like the Sydney Swans at the moment who are flying and going really well with their movement... Exuberance of use. Yeah, and, and other teams... They're happy to have pace on the game for longer periods, maybe 100, 110 minutes, because they back the fact that they can get across the ground better than their opposition. It feels like Geelong are just trying to limit the amount of time well, they need to be in free-flowing play. I like your theory, but the problem is they chip around and do all that, but yet the last 20 minutes they get swamped. So what, do they run out of steam even doing this, trying to slow it down? Well, I mean, naturally they're still running. You've still got to yeah, work I, hard I, to get I, yeah. on lead. So... Th- 
the, it, it's it's telling over the course of the whole game. I think other te- the teams are quickly realizing too, both Brisbane and Hawthorne, um, they within the game changed the way they played. They realized let's put speed on the game. Yes. So Hawthorne were taking more risks than we've seen them take recently. They were taking the corridor one. They were, Jath, ultimately lost them the game, ironically. Jath running from half back. You gotta have the right players trying to do that, <laughs> by the way. Yeah. Just realize your limitations. <laughs> Jath trying to run from yeah. behind. They like, just play on, play on, create that speed on the game. And that speed on the game was getting through Geelong. And Brisbane, exactly the same the week before. So well, can the we, great thing is, this is a build of conditioning for Geelong. Well, that's what I want to hear. So They've chalked up wins despite not being anywhere near their Oh, it's, it's great. So if we, if the speed on the game, as we're seeing, I'm not convinced it'll last the whole – it's going to be quicker than previous seasons, but it's not going to be – at the moment, you know, round three, it's still up and about. It calms down a little bit. It does. I think I think the overall speed, the Sydney's and yeah. that, will come back a Correct. little bit, and I think Geelong will be uh, build their speed of ball movement over the next eight weeks. So in August, would you be hoping – July, August, everyone's back, healthy, that Geelong won't will play a faster, you know, the man on the mark's still going to be there. This is going to be a way to play quicker. You think Geelong will understand they have to do that? Well, they will, and they, they understand it, I reckon, now. But they're very entrenched in their minds to play this way, which got yeah, them to a no, grand they, final they, last, last year. Last year, Correct. Got them. They, do you remember the first three rounds? I reckon they were playing as slow as this last year, but they quickened throughout yes, last I year. I agree with that. And Tom Hawkins had some fun with it. They got quicker throughout the... That's going to happen anyway this Get year. Jeremy Cameron in that team. Exa- personnel plays a big difference. All right. When you've got... Makes a big difference. So the when hysteria Cameron, is a bit Dangerfield. overs, isn't it? I feel it's overs. The attack on Geelong's... You know, oh, they're ruining footy. They're playing slow. This is one off. I mean... No, they're, they're playing to win within their current capabilities yes, right now. I like this. And they are winning. And, and Adelaide, they weren't ready and they didn't execute the whatever game style they were trying to do and Adelaide got the win and that was a big upset loss for them. They're two and one playing nowhere near their best football. Yeah. No, a tick tick. Uh, the worry is this is oh. just the worry is Melbourne are playing good football. <laughs> they're, they're 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 false three and O's. You know that. North Melbourne oh. they should have no worries with. And then really? West then West Coast the following week who are Where's dangerous. that guy? That's here. That's here. So it's just where that lands after six weeks. If it's four and two, good as gold. If it's three and three, oh, oh. it's well. You're then, a pessimistic. No, man, no, not pessimistic. It's, I'm a All realist. Right. You know what? you know what I reckon. Chris Scott and his coaching team being right now, they're being realistic. Okay, they know no, the limitations good. of their play, and they also know that they don't need to be playing their absolute peak oh, of no, football in round three. No, Richmond and Geelong. I mean, Richmond got smacked. We believe, everyone believes they'll be back. We know that. Now, you didn't miss too many games in your career, Cameron, but when you returned into the side, did you have uh, 37 and 566 metres gained in your return match? I'm sure. Mitchy ca- Duncan. Occasionally did that. <laughs> no, Mitch Duncan How was good superb. is that? Seriously. He, he, I am not a battle to get to the line. It was like he had to push to get to the line to get picked. 37 and 566 metres gained is a game and a half. Did very well. I'm I'm surprised you picked him as the number one player for talking no, about. Cameron I, Guthrie was well, so was going, far ahead of everyone. But I, I, I declared my love last week. Okay. That Sorry. I am now fully on his bandwagon. But I want have we got the tape? We need to roll the tape. I believe last week someone, I won't name who, said, Why don't we play Jack Henry forward? <laughs> and lo and behold, yes. he turns the game as a forward in the second half. He did. He you did. think Chris Scott's not listening to this? <laughs> Clearly, he is. Oh, if he did, he would. If he listened to this, he would <laughs> just tear his hair out. That How beautiful, good was luscious it? hair. Uh, it was brilliant by Jack Henry. He was he was a threat, and that. How good was that play in a oh, dour affair yes. to light up the MCG when he intercepted the ball, then involved in the play that ended in the Jordan Clark goal? That got the Cats fans off there. But their... every bit of that, all of them to keep running, Tommy's handball to the right person. Yeah, you know, it all had little bits of. Because if I'm Jack Henry, or you, I start the play, I'll just stop now. I'll just watch this go on. But they both sprinted. I mean, Jordan Clark was. was Two electric. very good athletes, Jack Henry and Jordan Clark. Ooh, see? That's what we need. Orky just joining in. No, you're right. It was a uh, it was a terrific move and a move within the game that broke it open. 
I oh. I loved again the game of Mark O'Connor. Well, he's a mini you. He's a mini you. He's I, the second coming of Cameron Ling. I the th- shark. <laughs> I think uh, he his balance first quarter outstanding. I think nine touches to three. He out, he got more so, touches than Mitchell for the game. You know what I loved most though, and and we're. All guilty of this. Early on in your playing a run with roll, the opposition player doesn't – they just want to get away from you the whole time so you can find the football. The trouble is when you find the football, you think, oh, I'll keep finding the football, and yeah. you drift away from what your primary think role it, was. Yeah, it's my day today. I think in the second quarter, that's what happened. Mitchell had 12 touches and got oh. them going a little got bit. got a bit ahead of himself, Sharky. Which, unfortunately, sometimes it's hard to rein that back in over the course of the game. Mark O'Connor – realised, oh, hang on, I got the balance wrong there. I went chasing the footy a little bit, straight back to his role. That is hard to do, trust me. And he then limited Mitchell's influence for the rest of the game and had a wonderful game. O'Connor, 26 disposal, eight clearances. Mitchell, 24 touches, 18 were handballs, and he only had four clearances. Fantastic. The shark stitched him up. I love it. He's the best in the business now. He's got everyone covered, and I love love what the coaching... what is it with you? Just joked before that Clint Bizzle got called Gary Ablett Senior prematurely. Well, I'm comparing him to Cameron Lee. Yeah, hang on a sec. You've gone best in the business. He's well, who done else it tag? twice. No, so you're right. That's that's give a good me point. a better option. Matt DeBoer's injured now. That's a good point. He is one of Why the. Why do you few think GWS it? made the grand final that year? Because they put Matt DeBoer in as a tag. He, Why do you think Mark O'Connor is doing an outstanding job? Who has the potential because of the smarts and balance in his game to be the best in the and business. athletically, and he's got everything. He's tall enough. Yeah, you know, he doesn't get bullied like you. You were a tall, boring tagger. The shark <laughs> is showing a little bit more. It's the best thing that's happened to oh. this midfield, which is stacked upon stacked. I love all it. year. You know that. I love it. I'm Speaking, of, I've got one question, Scotty. Yes. We made a commitment on this program to Chuka for three weeks to be Patrick Dangerfield's replacement, and he looked good against Brisbane. Very excited. We're all, everything's on. Everything was in place. Friday night. When did the teams come out? Sunday. I nearly drove off the road on the way to stall. Chuka got dropped to be the medical. Side. Well, but it's still dropped. Yes. Yeah. True. Unfortunately, Frank the Tank. My man got injured, so he got on quickly. And what happened? He was on for 15 minutes and he had nine touches and kicked <laughs> a goal. The great chooker. Why Why did we not have room for him in the middle of the ground from the start of the game? I, I don't know. Uh, what, because Mitch Duncan came back? Mitch Duncan's a wingman. You can find rotations. I don't know. I, I, just, I, I wanted to see him. You wanted to see him. I think some fans do. I think we've seen... Lots from last week. I think they've seen the impact that he's had when he's come on. Hopefully that just keeps building. Well, he's going to be an impact man now. No, I don't think he's an impact man. But I think he's showing enough to suggest he can be a very good player. I want to see more. And one more. There was a debutante. What Maxie, did you think? I, I liked Maxi Holmes. Leg speed? It, yeah, leg speed. Um, stayed in, stayed in, Good size. Stayed in the contest a couple of times with being a brand new player yeah. and a lighter body. I thought, oh, he's going to get pushed out of the way here. But... No, held his ground pretty well. Ooh. Some good, smart decisions. A couple of crucial touches late in the game, as I think other Geelong players were tiring. Oh, um, we found one. Well, You're happy? Oh, it's early. It's one game, but there were enough promising signs. Geelong, obviously, they traded up to get the pick. Is that oh, yeah, no, Wellesley. Wellesley, genius. Absolute genius. It was a bit of an unknown. Oh, COVID year, had only played school footy, hadn't played much, big at athletics. And Wellesley said, I want him. Trade up, draft night. Ding, 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 ding. It was Got a bit him. of that action. Good decision. Very good decision. Looked good. Um, I thought Tommy Atkins was very good again. At Apparently half-back. he's playing in defence. Yes, you know just in case you didn't <laughs> notice. The downside, you mentioned one of them, Frank the Tank, Francis oh, Evans. no, it's syndemosis too. That's looks ugly. Like, looks like, and for those who don't see this, it's not it's just a traditional ankle. It's like OP. a high ankle sprain. Why, where it's a why bit can't of we have rolled ankles anymore? Well, it's a different injury. It's a twisting motion as well, and generally longer term. It's 10 weeks. Sean Higgins as well. He's done a hamstring. Three to four oh. weeks, maybe. That's that's not good. Dangerfield's still out. Got one more week to serve. Gary Rowan's still out. Got one more week. Jeremy Cameron probably not going to come back in. I However, making noises he was going to come back, but he's not. Yes. Sam Menegola looks like he will come back. And is, is washing machines back yet? Sammy Simpson? No, probably going to play not. VFL this week, hopefully. Brad Close. 
Oh, like a uh, big chance. Frank the Tank replacement. Chris Scott mentioned him at his press conference. So he played VFL. So he's back from his injury. He did. He was great last year. So that would be a like for like, so potentially. Evans for close. Uh, Menegola for Higgins. Yeah, That's no. two good swaps. What else do we need to do? Oh, don't make Chuka. Make Chuka in, not sub. Asava. Yeah, I hope so. Asava, Asava still Asava? not back. No, he's still not quite yet. It was been. a knock on the leg. It was a fracture. At, at tr- oh, okay. It got fractured. Settle down. I'm not happy. We need, we need all that. So I agree. They're holding ground. And against the Melbourne team who are undefeated. They might play Ben Brown for his first game. That would be interesting. Oh, there's talk that him and Sam Wiedemann will play their first games, but more than likely VFL. I was going to say. You're going to have to play VFL. Yes. The, well, they, the other one, the hard one is, though, is the key backs for Melbourne have been outstanding. Lever and May is that combination. Yes. Tom Hawkins is going to have his hands full unless someone else. Jack Henry. Can be a threat down there. Well, Jack Henry might be the man. We should play a tagging role on Lever or, or, you know, do something like, not tagging, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Make, make be aware of his presence. I like that. That's good thinking. It's good by you. Yeah, no, outside I'm the box. Come through a lot. Cosy Pickett, are you worried about him? I'm worried. How exciting is the little man? He just smiles every time. It's great to watch I remember, him. do you remember when Jeff Farmer burst onto the scene? It's exactly the same. It's like, wow, how infectious is this kid? Yeah. Yeah, no, Busey or someone of the ilk's going to so, have a hard day. So who's O'Connor go to? Uh, Oliver? Oliver doesn't like being tagged at all. Petrarca doesn't get it as much, so I don't think... like He's an impact. He's the more damaging of the play, but, but Oliver can kickstart a lot yeah, of things. Fine, you don't worry about Brace or not. Yeah, you just go to Oliver. He doesn't like it. He's been harassed all year. I just think you go and giggle at him and his haircut. <laughs> and happy days. Uh, okay, I think I agree. Oh, it's a big Oliver. go. I mean, they, they, they've stopped it at the source. Lockie Neal's the source. Tom Mitchell's the source. Like stop Nola's it at the, the source. source. And the shark. Who he can thought? build his game off that. I Who love it. Who would have thought there'd um, be another Cameron Ling in this decade? There's no other changes, is there? There's. I don't it'll be Menegola for Higgins, and it'll be close, you'd think, for Close if Evans. he's done enough, yep. I think Maxie Holmes gets another game. Maybe he maybe can be sub and Chuka plays. Someone has to be sub, not Chuka. Because Melbourne have got – leg speed's not their mess. You know, Viney, you know, they're hard at it. They're a contested midfield as well. Jones, these sort of guys. So Chuka can thrive in that environment, can't he? He I've could, become yeah. your – I'm yep. cheering your man. It's your special like one. I like it. Do you know who um, I think should definitely stay in the team, even though you had him dropped for round one? Oh, hang on. We have received some <laughs> feedback from our old friend, Reggie, Zach Tui, who listened in. To you saying that he was dropped and left out of the team in round one when he had back complaints, which I brought up and you dismissed, that you said he was just you, left out. He has taken smiling? offense. Is this on? So can he see your face here? He took offense. I love Zach more than any person in this club. You and said I was, he didn't get I was a game just in angry round one. that he wasn't selected in round one. He was out with injury. He played in the VFL. He played a limited management time. It wasn't. He played a lot. So if your back's too sore to play, you don't play, Cameron. If your back is... I I was critical of why he wasn't. He could play with half a back against Adelaide and would have been better than anyone else they sent. He should (laughs) never not be in that team. That was my point. But you're the one who had him dropped when he wasn't. I was horrified and angry that he'd been left out. He was limited. Cameron, if you got a back injury, you don't play VFL. He was limited. What, you don't think it aggravated playing a game of football? No, he just couldn't go to his full 100% I have sources capacity. that have admitted they made an error. Zach Tui. And in next week, he came back and won them the game. Has taken great offence to he your hasn't. comments. He is so angry. Because you and I know. You and I know that I'm you're right. right. No, you're completely incorrect. We're going to take a break anyway, and I want to. Well, maybe I'll. Maybe the, I hope there's some listener questions. Maybe from Zach. We'll take a break because Glenn Bizzle's about to join us. He's just uh, popped up on our screen. He's working from his office in Melbourne. Uh, we're going to have a chat to him. Geelong player, Melbourne player. We're going to talk to Biz. We'll get to your questions in just a second. Uh, we'll be back soon. Welcome back. It is great to have you with us on to the final bell. And we've got our special guest now, Scotty, in honour of the fact the Cats are playing the well, Demons. It's his cup. We thought we'd get a man who donned the colours of both teams, 75 games for the Cats, 
88 games for the Demons throughout the late 90s and early 2000s. Kicked 72 goals for the Cats, but only the seven for the Ds. He went back. Yeah, change of role, Cameron. Used his smarts as a forward to then turn himself into a very good defender with the Ds. Of course, I speak of Clint Bizzle. Biz, great to have you on. Uh, Good to be on, boys. Just some of the two greatest lads uh, that Geelong has ever produced, really, that I get to chat to today. Well, I did just mention the goals for the Cats and then not so many for the Ds playing as a defender. You went from a high-flying, just hanger-taking forward to a rock-solid defender. Who, who did that bizarre switch, Biz? Jeez. Well, then you, you, came, you came to the footy club as a forward, mate, and then obviously <laughs> went to the midfield. You know what that's like, when, you know? Which coach did it to you, Biz? Made you a defender. Coach. Um, so it was Airsy. Um, Airsy, I played um, both both forward um, and, and in defence, but... Um, pretty much played defence first, defence first um, early on. Um, When I was playing reserve football, I was playing a little bit more up forward. But I think, you know, when you're trying to get into the side, um, you know, you'll take take any position. So I was was playing down back to start with. But look, you know, my my entire uh, upbringing as a a football player was very much around, I played a lot in the midfield, but I always played that kick behind the play. So for me, reading the ball was actually a lot easier than it was, you know, the way in coming down as a forward. So um, I, I suppose I found my niche and then, um, you know, obviously couldn't stay at the Cats because Darren Milburn then, uh, you know, sort of took on that that sort of position down back. But, uh, um, you know, would have loved to have stayed in Geelong, loved my time in Geelong, but um, got to kick a few goals as well. Now, Biz, we can laugh about it now, but how was it when the great man's name, there's only one name, Gary Ablett, and your name gets linked to it? I don't think it was by me, was it? I hope I didn't, wasn't the one who wrote it. By one of your fellow Pot- journalist friends. Potentially. They love to do a comparison. There's not a harder thing to happen to a young kid. You did well to you know, roll with it, but looking back, how was it? Yeah, look, you know, I, I mean... Um... I suppose with all these things, context is always the greatest, <laughs> the greatest leveler. And that, that came about after a game when I was playing in defence. I actually played on Aaron Hamill at Princess Park and had a, you know, had a really good game. And Gary Hocking was, in, was obviously doing some special commentary and he just made a few, um, I suppose, similarities about coming to the football club at, a, at an older age, um, being able to you know, take a mark and um, you know, kick both sides of your body. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> the long advertiser like it's a uh, front page. And um, look, luckily for me, my next year was, um, was 2000. So it was actually my, my best year at the footy club. So it didn't worry me because I knew exactly um, where uh, Buddha was coming from. And I had to speak to the great man afterwards and going, mate, what have you done? What have you done here? But uh, I think as, as far as supporters and, and people that are involved in footy, it's always one of those things, isn't it? You know, you get certain players can get compared to, to, to legends of the game. And, and I saw it just as something that I was, I was, flat, I was flattered by, um, you know, to be mentioned in the same, in the same uh, context as uh, Gary, but but not as not as a player. I know exactly what Buddha was was talking about, but it seems to have followed me around. And I tried to shake that tag when I went to Melbourne. I said to, I said to Dennis, mate, you've got to get me in the back line, get rid of this uh, this forward tag. But uh, anyway, it's um it's good for good for a laugh, good for a chat. You had a couple of uh, fantastic coaches to learn from. You mentioned Gary Ayres. You had a couple of seasons under Bomber Thompson, but the man you just mentioned, Neil Danaher, was your coach at the Demons. I'm a, a wonderfully loved figure, even when he was coaching and when he was playing at the Bombers. But since, um, unfortunately, with um, the diagnosis of uh, MND, has just become such a special person in the football landscape. What are your memories of the great Neil Danaher as a coach? Was he a little scarier back then than we think he's just a friendly, great guy now? But uh, was he a bit of a scary man as well? I think he was a lot scarier before I got there. Um, his reputation um, early on, he was fire and brimstone. Um, he was letting players know, you know, what he thought about it. And um, even speaking with some of the assistant coaches who'd been there for the journey, he really evolved as a coach. And he was always somebody that was wanting to get better and learn and develop as a as an individual um, and as a human, but also a coach. And he, and he absolutely loved coaching. And to be able to follow him um, through everything he's done with Fight MND has been an absolute honour and a privilege to watch the great man do what he has, you know, what he's done to raise, 
I think it's now over $40 million in uh, close to six years. Um, unfortunately, the disease is taking its toll. The beast is uh, slowly getting there. But I can tell you right now, the day that we slay that thing, um, you know, is going to be one of the happiest days of my life, um, you know, considering the impact that he's had, not only for me and giving me an opportunity at another football club, um, but for many other uh, people, you know, suffering with MND and their families. It's just a horrendous disease. So, Biz, back to the Mighty Cats, 1996, there would have been some characters you would have come through with. Do you keep in contact with many or who, who makes you smile when you think back to the early days? Oh, gosh, I tell you, uh, Brad Scholl always brings a smile <laughs> to my face. <laughs> if you smile to everyone's face, I think we know exactly why. Yeah, he's just uh, he's just one of those guys that's, uh, I think, you know, you can, uh, he, he's funny without even thinking that he's funny. Um, you know, he's just one of, the, one of those guys. But, you know, I have, you know, such fond memories. I, I still remember the day that I met Gary Ablett Sr. Um, you know, I just saw him walking through the room and I just, quickly just put out my hand and say, g'day, Gary, my name's Clint, just to introduce myself. And, um, you know, he didn't really say much. And I got the privilege of playing right alongside of him, um, you know, and I would often say, so, Gary, where do you want me? You know, <laughs> he didn't he goes, idea who you were. <laughs> nah, he didn't know who I was, but he just said, you'll be right, young fella, just go wherever you want. <laughs> just, just <laughs> make, sure, make sure it's outside 50. <laughs> correct correct just get out of my way and look I, I still remember um you know i think it was a game against uh, uh richmond you know i was playing in the forward pocket and i remember leading out never going to get the ball turning around and just seeing him fly i think it might have been over the top of paul bullis and taking this huge huge specky and here i am as a as a kid that enjoyed watching him play i've just gone gaza i thought i was actually still watching him play <laughs> But I'm out on the field and, and trying to do my job. So I had to try and, you know, get back into, um, you know, getting to the, the fall of the ball. But look, there's wonderful memories. I mean, Billy Brownless, Barry Stoneham, Grant Tanner, um, you know, Sean Simpson, Lee Colbert. Um, still keep in touch with Lee and um, Benny Graham, uh, Buddha every now and again on, um, on Facebook and things like that. And obviously having two kids, it's, you know, it's a, it's a busy busy time um, with kids and work and everything. But I, I love catching up and, you know, COVID, apart from COVID, um, you know, there's a, there's a group of guys that, you know, catch up in Melbourne, Liam Pickering, um, you know, that kind of era. And it was, a, it was a wonderful time. And I've got, you know, fond memories of, uh, of, of my time at Geelong. So watching, I know oh, you're on a Geelong podcast, so I hope you answer this the right way, but you're <laughs> Geelong or Melbourne man when you watch the footy? Well, mate, I've, you know, my heart is, is definitely split down the middle. And, um, you know, for me, I've, I, I'm forever grateful for Geelong giving me the opportunity to, you know, realise my AFL dream. Um, but look, cats have won three flags. You've got to share it around. You've got to share the love around, don't you? Um, so I look, the, waiting a while if you're waiting for the demons. Oh, I don't know. This three <laughs> oh, zip on. to start it's things. Cold storm, Cam. Oh, It'll change on Sunday. There you go. Will it? <laughs> Who's your tip, who's your tip for Sunday? Oh, yeah. Put the oh, geez, you know I'm going to be in, in trouble either way, you know, here. Uh, and one thing, look, one thing I find when I do watch footy, I just love watching, um, you know, players from any team. I end up, you know, sometimes, you know, being mesmerised by some of the players, by other players. And I'm sure, Linky, you might be the same because as a, as a football lover and someone that's played their game, you just admire, you know, great football passages and play and whether that's, you know, hardball get or you know even unselfish acts or the one percenters that's the kind of stuff that i really really love um but look i think it's going to be an incredible game uh melbourne sort of three and zip uh you know geelong being a complete powerhouse over the last 10 years uh and it should never be written off um but look you know I, who knows i just hope for a really great game of footy oh, <laughs> Lovely, outstanding now tell us since retirement, retired, uh, I think, after 07 with the Ds. Uh, done lots of things, written a book, uh, produced TV, show TV content, absolutely. What are you doing now? Tell the, the Cats fans out there, what's Clint Bizzle up to these days? Well, these days, uh, I suppose I'm, I've been, um, yeah, going back to, to my roots of, of high performance um, and something that I've always, always loved. And it's, I think it was one of those itches that need to be scratched. I, I finished football and... I know like a lot of footballers, it's like you want to pretty much just get away from the game. It was, you know, I don't want to watch another game of footy. Lingy, you might have been a little bit 
different. I don't know. But for me, I just, um, uh, I just needed to get away. And I had the opportunity and did travel the world producing a TV travel show, um, you know, for, for over a decade. Um, and for me, that combined the love of football. And also, I always had an interest in, um, in drama at school. And, and um, for me, that, you know, um, producing a TV travel show and producing other talent was great. And then it got to the stage where I just always felt like, felt like I needed to get back into this high performance space because I've always loved getting the best out of people. And so designing or tailoring high performance leadership programs for individuals and teams to play at their best um, is, is, and has always been me. And I feel like I'm it's a coming home. So now I get to work with, you know, some of Australia's, you know, best companies and executives um, and take them to another level. Um, so as a, as a high performance consultant in leadership and resilience. In the corporate world with uh, executive teams. Uh, and what would the name of the company be? Busy? I reckon it's going to be, he's always been very creative. Clint yeah, Bizzle. I know. Uh, I think it'll be something just you've got to think about. Yeah. Well, what's the name? What are you going with, Biz? All right. Yeah. You ready? Yeah. Clint Bizzle Consulting. <laughs> <laughs> I told yeah. you. Yeah. Outstanding. Uh, now, <laughs> back on the travel, give our listeners top three destinations. You've done it all for a decade. What are your three favourite places? Okay. Not that we three. may ever get to go there again, but it, pretend COVID disappears. Yeah, look, I, I, yeah, fingers crossed we get, you know, we get to travel because, you know, for me, it just, yeah, broadens your horizons, get to meet people and hear their stories, um, um, which is just fascinating. And I think it just adds an extra layer of depth into, you know, um, us humans, you know, into your soul. So for me, top three, Antarctica, number one. <laughs> Cameron, you're made for wow. Antarctica. No sun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's, he's very harsh. Uh, Scotty, Nepal, number two. Just trekking. That could be um, a bit difficult for me. <laughs> and, the, and the hospitality of the, of the locals is incredible. And then number three, three is Canada. Oh. Yeah, I've wanted so only, to go to Canada. Yeah, I've, I really want to go. I've been at Niagara Falls and stared at Canada, but I never actually stepped into it. Mm. Canada. Anywhere in particular Canada. in Canada I should be focusing one day when we can travel biz? Look, I think, you know, you, Vancouver is an incredible city. Um, you've got um, so many different things that you can do uh, very, very close by. So they, they say you can, um, what is it, you can ski, you can play golf and be on the water all within an hour, an hour and a half. Um, okay. And there's, there's many different different things. So, I, you know, I was lucky to travel along the uh, Rocky Mountaineer, um, went all the way from... Victoria to Banff, um, so that Icefields Parkway and the, and the the Rockies, phenomenal, and then um, also Whistler, um, and then even like downtown Van, Vancouver. It's just really special, Gas Town and things like that. It's really really what interesting. Are the beaches sipping pina coladas in this sort of array that this is offering. You said, Cam, no, which is more my style. I put a oh, you're an the, adventurer. Uh, this, no, I just get the tan oh, going, yes. kick back, top off, just uh, yeah, <laughs> go for that sort of look. Um, Biz, we've got to let you go. Unfortunately, I keep chatting with you. I want to hear about a few more spots. But Clint Bizzle Consulting is, uh, all jokes aside, Biz will be doing some wonderful things, management consultancy and uh, focusing in on high performance. Great to have a chat with you, Biz. Enjoy the game on the weekend. I am interested to see um, just which colour jumper you'd be wearing Mm. underneath the shirt. Maybe (laughs) is the blue and white or the... Red and blue. I feel like it might be slightly more red and blue. Yeah, I'm not worried about this. Yeah, I don't they, know. they tainted him. We won't dob him in, the man. So he's been kind enough to join us. Biz, thank you so much. All the very best with everything you're doing. Enjoy Sunday's game. No, thank you very much, boys. Uh, it's always a pleasure chatting to you two legends. Um, and best of luck with, with the show. And it should be a great game on the weekend. So Big thanks. thanks to Clint Bizzle there. Thanks, we're, gonna get to, we're gonna take a break. We're gonna get to your questions in just a second. Welcome back. It is great to have you with us on to the final bell. Great to chat with Clint Bizzle there. Oh, how good. We got we got the Very story serious, of the man. Oh yes, he was. Oh yeah, Buddha Hockey. I didn't know it was Buddha. No. That's fascinating. No, I thought it was one of your mates, the journos, yeah. just gone I, with it. Well, Buddha started and then oh, we went with it. And if Buddha Hocking says it, it uh, would have got some mileage. But I um, remind, he reminds me of Gary Ablett. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> the beers great to chat yes. with the beers we'll keep what trying was to get consultancy thing uh, yeah. Clint, Clint Bizzle consulting <laughs> it's all over it. uh, we'll try and get guests like that on oh, as, no. as often as we can throughout the year obviously great to hear from current players some past players but 
Mm, Those who've had a little bit of a, a foot in each camp's always fun. I reckon he's and a Zach little... Zach Tui be on in the coming weeks. Yes, yes, we are working on that. I don't have his question here, but angry. Very angry <laughs> at Scotty. Listener questions time. Okay, hit me. We love our listeners sending them in. Please keep them coming. Uh, this is, an, this is a, a slightly longer one, but bear with me. There's a oh, question no, at the end. Okay, this one's from Matt Doherty. Hey, guys, I'm a new Cats fan from the States. Oh. Great to have you with us. Mayor of LA. I think it's a pretty cool story how I found you guys. I, along with seven other guys, host a sports trivia podcast, and a friend of ours has been an AFL fan for years. He wanted us to get into the AFL, so he assigned us all teams based on the things we thought were most important for our fandom. I was assigned the Cats because I'm from a small town in the north and I love the Green Bay Packers, the team from the smallest town in all of major US sports, in the coldest town with a rich history of winning and passionate fans. Seems like being a Cats fan was natural for me. I signed up for a membership before the season. I'm loving the sport and the Cats, although not the first match. Fair enough too, Matt. I really appreciate your support. Great to have him on board. Ah, That's fantastic. My question is a simple one, I hope. On the uniforms and on the team apparel, I see the phrase cotton on. What does that mean? Thanks and go Cats, Matt Doherty. Cotton On being a big sponsor of the club and a huge company in Geelong, a big yes. uh, employer. Um, Nigel Austin founded yeah. uh, Cotton On, the clothing company, many, many moons ago, early 90s. Well, that's the first thing. I don't think Matt even knows about the clothing company. So it's a sponsor's logo. Yes. It but is, uh, it Nigel brand. started it back at the back of his car in Ballarat and then Geelong many moons ago. And I think... He was selling, I think, denim jackets yeah, yeah. out of the back of his car at a uh, Beckley Park Market, Matt, Correct. which is a market um, in Geelong, the North North of Geelong and I think his mum came up with the name and he stuck with it and it's just lasted the whole way. God and love him. he opened his first store, I think, in Market Square yes. in Geelong and now well over 2,000 well, he, stores He slipped worldwide. into number 59 on the rich list of Australia. I think he's just... Just, yeah. just tipped over the billion mark, I the great man. So I he's going well. His wealth starts with a B, not an M. Yeah. Now, no, we love him and there's a lot of cotton on happening for the Cats. Yeah, and a huge Geelong fan, might I add too, and a yes. wonderful supporter of the club. So hopefully that answers your question, Matt, but um, keep supporting the Cats and really appreciate you hitting us up. This one's from Steve Honor. Hey guys, question for the podcast. Hey, Lingy and Scotty, love the show. After seeing Jordan Clark hurtling across the MCG like Haley's comment, what... Who do you think would win a race between Jordan Clark and Wojo, David Wojcicki, circa 2007? Who would you give it to, Scotland? I Wojo was fast. I, you're, more, you're a better place to judge this. I mean, Wojo left you in the dust. I think... You, Jordan, you're a Wojo man. I think I'm Jordan thinking. Clark gets across the ground very nicely. He's got some speed and some run and exactly what the team needs. But David Wojcicki, circa 2007, was actually lightning fast. That fast? He was, yeah, he was truly, truly quick. That was, what, a 70, 80 metre sprint that Jordan gave for us? Yeah, that was, uh, listen, I'm not taking it away from Jordan. He was, he's impressive. I think Wojo would win it. Jeez, he was a good player on your team. Again, he was an element you didn't have, extreme pace, boom. he, he didn't play in 08. We missed him in the 08 grand final. Was left out. Played a lot of games. He's, he's resilient, wasn't he? Yeah. A wonderful bloke. Great player. I, I reckon there were times where you know, you just, you're at half back. There's a bit of congestion. You just need something. And you turn to mm. your help. And the feeling of like, <laughs> Here oh, he comes. I've got Wojo. And he's already got a head of yeah, steam yeah, yeah. up. And you give it to him. You're like... See you later, boys. This one's going down the other end of the ground in a hurry. And he could hurt people with his tackling. He ran into people. Yep. No. I, so, Steve, I'm going to give it to You're Wojo. You're biased, but I'd like to see it, Steve. It'd be very interesting. Wojo could still run pretty quickly. Yeah, I know. I'm tipping he hasn't blown out in retirement. No. He doesn't have an ACL, though. That's the trouble. He did his ACL while playing at Newtown footy late. Just never got it fixed. <laughs> he plays, I play cricket with him now. And every now and then I call him through for a quick single. He's like that. And then he looks at me and says, do you remember <laughs> I don't have my anterior cruciate ligament? Can you not do that? So, yeah, I'd still give Wojo a nod. Uh, a couple of quick ones. Michael Irvin asks, do we need to shake things up at the selection table? If so, what are our options? Michael, I would no. say not fully shaking up now. Well, I think we, we're yeah. still waiting on some personnel coming back. Um, I, I like, like the fact they blooded Max Holmes on the weekend. Yes, I'm a big fan of that sort of behaviour. I think men, we touched on earlier, Menegola, Brad Close come back in are the obvious ones. I don't think, 
No. Major. The only one I'll ask is, and maybe you back Reese Stanley in this week against Max Gorn, but maybe Darcy Fort. Well, if he's fit, he's there. been out injured, so that's yep. it, it hasn't been an issue yet to pick one or the other, but it's getting closer. So, you know, Reese has to play better than he did on Monday. Drew asks, Drew Alex, who has put on more size during their career, Isaac Smith or Andrew Mackey? Isaac is a enough, whipper, isn't he? We saw both of them this morning before we came on air, and Mac certainly hasn't put on any since I last saw him. No, but, but Isaac I, was very skinny. Yeah, um, he's so fit. What, but Isaac is lean skinny. Andrew was skinny but fat. Yes, yeah, exactly. His skin was no definition. One hundred and forty. That's just him, isn't it? Yeah. So even peak Andrew Mackey, I'm not sure we could ever see <laughs> abdominal <skin> muscles. <laughs> he's a skinny fat he man. He still controls the club though, doesn't he? God <laughs> love him. We don't actually know what he does, but he's just here. Ah, guru. I'll, I'll get to I'll get to something in a second with him. Sam Kelly asks, Lingy, who is your favourite teammate to hang out with around the club? Oh. Wow. Now, what do you describe as? Because yeah. you hung out in bars, nightclubs, oh. you hung out... There's different areas of you hanging with. I loved surfing, Sam. So a nice day, maybe a day off from footy and the surf's good. Brad Otten's Tim Callan were two of my favourite yes. blokes to just spend time with. What about if you wanted some amusement, who would you hang yeah, out with? Yeah, post-season footy trip and everyone's a little bit tired and a bit um, bit down. <laughs> one man. James Kelly <laughs> would bring a lot to the table, Sam. Your uh, surname, namesake, James Kelly would... We will Liven get him on. We're trying to get him on. He will be on the podcast soon. Yes. Uh, Andrew Mackey was great company. Corey Enright and Joel. Joel Corey was always fantastic company. And that was more you could just sit and just chat well, with Well, he didn't want to speak too much. <laughs> he spoke to the people he liked. He just know, never he spoke, spoke to, to you like. He always spoke to me. No, not you, Juno. Politely. Jim Ray asks, best Cats goal in recent memory? He's thinking of Clarks from the weekend to get people up and about. I mean, uh, our our a, mate Regis after the siren. Yeah, that that. No, I, I get your point. Get people out of there for its whole play. I can't think of a better it, one for a while. It was played ad nauseum on Monday because of the build up of Geelong Hawthorne. Tom Hawkins' goal in 2012 right was still something special. Sixty to win it after what? Recent times. Though. You know what we need to do one day though is when we do those highlights, we need to show. The whole passage of play that includes Paul Puyopolo trying to do like the karate yeah, yeah, kick mid air when they've Geelong got the game never won. Got the ball back. Yeah, no, correct. <laughs> it goes across the face <laughs> and somehow ends up. Oh, yeah, no, that it, that was a brain fade from your man. Uh, that Poppy. was nice. Um, Max Holmes debuted this week. Who is possibly the next cat debutant? Liam asks. Uh, let me think. Well, we've still got oh, Cooper Stevens. Not I think he's, he's injured. injured at the moment. So he. Uh, who else? Have oh, we got Frank I, the Tank? No, I think we're... I don't think any... Who's I our man was, who played one game last year? We mentioned him last week. I think it was Francis and Max, though, who were banging the door down. Ben Jarvis played yes. the one game last year. I would year. like... If Gary Ryan's out and he kicked five in the reserves a couple of weeks ago... So he, he won't be a debutant. No, I mean, he's played one game. He deserves another crack. He might be the next after that. Haroldino asks, is Cam Guthrie a genuine Brownlow medal chance? Well, let's go through it. He's got three. Three on the weekend. He could have had three the other week. Zero from Adelaide. Well, no one gets in here. He's there a lot. Good but team. Umpires will see the dreadlocks. Joel Selwood would have got the three against Brisbane, though. Guthrie oh, maybe two. two. So, so he's on five eye. Yeah. It's not bad. Why not, Haroldino? Why and not? people know, you know, last year was his breakout year, so they're aware of him. You said last week it's now his team. It is. And look what happened. When they were backs against the wall, he has 43. Another thing I got right. Like Zach. I mean, sorry. Yeah, keep going. Matt Vella asks, how did Wellesley start his career? We'll get to that in a second. He deserves more recognition. (laughs) Matt, no, he doesn't. The great Wellesley is pumped up left, right and centre. We are building statues for the great man. more about the great man than any other person (laughs) at this club. Oh, and he just – Andrew Mackey's being groomed as maybe the next Stephen oh, Wells. Yeah. Well, Wells, he's just – he trust me, Matt, he runs the show He's here. not going anywhere in, <laughs> in a hurry. Uh, he's, how did he get – he told me this once. Oh, he was a great footballer and cricketer himself locally. Outstanding. Uh, still holds the highest score in GCA, which is a very good competition, GCA cricket history, a 230-odd. Yeah, he got busy. Um, very good golfer. He, he worked got under his start under Bill, Bill McMaster. McMaster. But yeah. – 
I don't know how he got that st- – he told me why. Like, he didn't come in and suddenly he was in recruiting. He did something here, but he's been at the club for 85 years. Yeah. One of the – no, don't worry, Matt. I, jokes aside, he does deserve a lot of oh, recognition he, he and he does it. get the recognition. Um, one of the legends he's and a true club person. Just oh, loves the cats. And he doesn't – he doesn't – generally doesn't like the recognition and I always hang it on him because we pump him up. He doesn't like the recognition, but he kind of does. Yeah, of course he does. He struts. He <laughs> struts down there. Don't worry about that. We, well, Matt, we did just see him down in the foyer and, oh, uh, and straight away Scotty and I were both um, saying hello <laughs> as we respectfully do and then quickly stirred him up as he wandered for another coffee. <laughs> well, that's what he does. Swander around he the place. He finds people like, you know, the tank from nowhere and Maxie Holmes. Maxie Holmes, yes. Uh, Mark Blitzarves. Oh, oh, the steeplechaser. Uh, Tom Stewart, the carpenter from South Barwon and no, Jack Henry, the... Decathlete, was he? Yeah, he was something like Decathlete. that. Decathlete. Um, thank you for your questions. Please keep them coming in. Email, social media. We'll get to as many as we can throughout the year. Always good to uh, know what you want to hear us talk about because sometimes I wonder if we're just talking completely ridiculous no, nonsense. No. They seem to be following you, our instructions. You are consistently off the mark when you don't know Zach Tui missed with <laughs> a sore back. Uh, Zach will be on to clear that up. Zach will be on. Cats take on Melbourne Sunday afternoon, MCG, 320 game. I think it's a very dangerous game for the Cats. Well, it is, obviously, because they're in form. But I, I think they've played, not above themselves, but... Geelong haven't played nearly to their level. I get that. They're going to have to play better, obviously, than Monday. I still think Geelong are a better team, by the way. Don't get me wrong with that. I still think they beat Melbourne. I just have some nervous thoughts about Max Gorn in the midfield and May and Lever's ability to contain our forward line, which isn't scoring 100 points a game right now. No. There's some nervous... There's just some little... Patrick Danger will be good in a game like this. I I would like Patrick back at some stage. Still having a week. He played in the twos again, didn't he? I would assume so. You're allowed to. It's completely within the AFL rules. I think someone said he had another run. Oh, no, he might do it this week. He had a big training session. So Patrick will be ready to go. Wolf, they'll find a way. Okay. Let's hope they do. Sunday afternoon, MCG... Uh, I'm sure all of our listeners will be tuning in from wherever they are around the country, including Matt from the US of A. Um, Keep your questions coming in. We will be back again next week. We'll try and track down a guest ahead of the Cats taking on North Melbourne the following week and then West Coast. So two games back to back, yeah. Yeah, two games at GMHBA Stadium. Hopefully in the next day or two, Scotty, we will find out the following three weeks. Oh, yeah, we got Is the, that right? Yes. I think there's small batches of times yeah. and days to come out. I, from my understanding, it will be, unless something, and there's an outbreak somewhere, it'll be in three-week batches going forward. Is so is West Coast nailed down as in a time or not? Yes. Oh, one, it is. Okay. one forty-five on, on Saturday, Saturday afternoon. Almost traditional footy. Quarter to two on a Saturday afternoon at the good old Cadenia Park. all the Park. local leagues are kicking off. I know that, oh... North Melbourne's a Sunday 4.40 game. Yes. I think North Melbourne might be hidden in some well, different time spots <laughs> over the remainder of the year. We urge Cat fans to come along, though. Yes, please come <laughs> along. Make it a difficult place to come to. When when a team's down, you got as it you got to keep them down. Because eventually the cycle turns and I you know. get a little turn where... Not here, the cycle never turns. <laughs> Wellsy makes sure it doesn't, Cameron. Uh, great to catch up with you, Scotty. Enjoy the rest of the week. I'm glad you enjoyed Stall, the great Stall gift yes, on the weekend. where your wife was from. We'll talk about that in coming episodes. Yes, we were. I was back there for the weekend. <laughs> Hard to believe. We didn't catch up. No. No. That's all right. Don't take it personally. <laughs> we'll be back again next week. Thanks for joining us.